Hello there guys, uh, my name is John, I'm new to this YouTube channel, North Coast RC, and um, as my first video, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of background and we're going to get into what the topic of the video actually is. So I've been in the hobby a couple of years now, uh, you can see just over here my, uh, my little collection here which is slowly starting to build up. Uh, this has been a great hobby to get into. Uh, a lot of good people have been giving me advice and, you know, speaking in the ear when uh, you don't have enough money but you end up buying something anyway. It's great. So, what we're going to be looking at in this video, uh, my first on the channel, is my half-track build. Now, I've been sharing it with a lot of Facebook groups, um, some of the crawler groups and stuff like that, and uh, I've been getting a lot of very similar questions a lot. So I'd like to tackle some of those in this video as well while we're looking over the vehicle as a whole and um, showing you what's gone into it and hopefully get a little bit of a bit of running as well and show you it moving about and doing what it does. So without any further ado, let's have a look at it. And here it is. Uh, at this point, the half track is pretty much complete. There's nothing really I want to add to it that will change the structure of the vehicle too much. Um, maybe a couple of things, like I want to add a bit of towing gear on the back. Uh, I had initially thought about a, an extra winch, maybe a belly winch or something like that. But in general, I'm happy with where it is and what I've got uh, applied to it so far. Now, let's start with the bare basics. The most frequently asked question, what are these tracks? Well, these tracks are from a Henglong 1 16th scale Russian KV-1 tank. Uh, the lower hull is all based off that KV-1. The wheels, tracks, uh, suspension are all KV-1, but they've been upgraded to metal parts. So the, the track is metal, return rollers, uh, road wheels are metal, idler and sprocket wheel are all metal parts, uh, including the suspension swing arms, which are hiding way in back here. Those are all metal parts bolted on to the standard or a shortened version of the standard plastic chassis. Now, by shortened, what I can do here is I can remove the bed. The bed's attached with these two pins uh, that I made out of a little bit of rod, which slot through a couple of brackets, if I can get the camera to show those. There's a couple of brackets just here in the center shot and behind this one here which um, connect to the chassis rails. So let's get the bed off and out of the way. This all comes off as one big unit, which is great. We'll come back to that in a moment or two. So underneath that, we have all of this stuff. So let's remove this as well. This is a piece of um, plastic card, which I made as a sort of a motor guard here to stop mud and rubbish getting into uh, those two rear motors. We'll talk about electronics in a minute, but <clears throat> what we have is basically the KV-1 plastic hull down here, which I've shortened by cutting, and I believe the, the cut point is just about here where this line starts to go horizontal. It's cut just behind that, and what that's allowed me to do is remove two road wheels worth of length out of the tank, which has given me these four road wheels instead of six, uh, per side and that has given me a nice shorter track wheelbase uh, for the whole vehicle so it it's about a third or a third and a bit maybe two thirds length uh, compared to what the, the wheels are giving me as well so that is then attached by a bracket which you can see the the sides of here which are connecting into this piece which came with the chassis and the bracket down there, hopefully I've got some photos and stuff I can put up as well. Uh, this bracket is basically a piece of aluminium that's bolted to the belly plate of the KV-1 hull uh, with an extra layer of plastic epoxy on in place to give a little bit more strength. And then the standard 312, I think it's 312 millimeter chassis um, from Injora. So a lot of the parts you'll find were, were uh, bought from AliExpress. This is just the standard chassis bolted onto the KV hull and everything else forward of the track section is just a standard crawler chassis. Nothing special about it. That's what um, I'd aimed for with this whole build was that if I ever got bored of the half track, 
I can just unbolt the track section, <clears throat> put an extra set of links on, put a back axle on, and I've got a standard crawler at that stage, you know, and I can retain um, the truck bed and everything, and it, it might look a little odd, but it's still going to run just fine. Um, that's why we have, I, I chose a chassis with a transfer box as well, uh, instead of one big central gearbox. So the gearbox is actually up in the front underneath uh, the hood here, which we'll get to. Um, but I chose the transfer box because that gives me that option of just turning this chassis into a crawler. You know, if I change this chassis out for a better one that will fit the half track better or anything like that. So let's start on electronics. A lot of people were asking uh, what um, motors I was using or what electronics. And some people were th initially thought that I was doing what... Um, Skill Builders Guild, a, a member of Skill Builders Guild did, was basically take an M41 Bulldog tank and just run the back axle into the uh, the sprocket wheels, extended it a little bit and ran it that way. I decided to keep the three motors, or keep the two motors in the back because they were just easier to do. There was less engineering involved in figuring out any gear ratios or anything like that. So what I've been doing is running these two motors, which are 390 motors, through metal gearboxes. They're connected to a dual motor ESC, which is here. It's a, a Hobbywing Quick Run dual motor ESC, 80 watts. That is then connected into the receiver, which is under the seat uh, inside the cab of the truck. The other motor, which is in the front here, if I pop the hood, you might see it underneath this 3D printed engine. There's a 540, 55 turn motor running through the standard gearbox that came with this chassis and that motor is being run by a Hobbywing 1080 80 watt ESC. These two ESCs are connected together into channel 2. Want to turn 2 to burn? Yep. Into channel 2 into the radio. It's now, uh, that ESC is also located under the seat inside the cab. What that has allowed me to do, because the Hobbywing ESCs come with a programming board, it's allowed me to set the maximum speed of this set of motors to make this motor uh, in sync with all of it. Now, I've been trying and doing about 10 hours of testing on this thing before really getting into it. The front motor ESC is set so that it's slightly quicker than the ESC that's running the tracks. That way, I'm reducing uh, the amount of push that the tracks give the front axle when it's doing a turn. So it's more likely to turn a bit more easy doing it that way. So the front axle runs a little bit quicker than the two back motors, but the back motors are providing me plenty of torque. They're providing me a lot of, not a lot of straight line speed, but certainly a lot of power, which is great. You notice really quickly when the battery starts to go low, you lose the front axle first, so you lose all the steering. Then the tracks are starting to push. You find the front wheels start to dig in. It's a clear sign of things going wrong or the battery needs changed. Um, other electronics wise, I have a GT Power Bluetooth version sound system in here, mounted in here. It's all covered with um, duct tape here just to sort of reduce mud and rubbish getting into it. With the speaker sitting loose, the speaker, the speaker will sit on top of the battery when there's a battery fitted. I'm currently running it on a 2S Turnigy 5000 milliamp uh, LiPo runs well, does about an hour and a half up to two hours runtime on full throttle, uh, runs nice and smooth. So that is basically the biggest battery I'd want to put in here. I don't think I want anything larger than that, although I have a, a 5500 LiPo that I could put in if I feel the need to. But for an hour to up to two hours runtime, absolutely fine, no problems there. Uh, moving forward, so Let's have a look down here. So the chassis is, as I said, all standard, um, all Endura. We have a winch on the front. We have a metal axle up here, which is probably going to be replaced. So I'm not going to wax lyrical too long about that. Same with the suspension. Uh, that's going to be changed out. Those were just standard pieces that I had lying around. The cab is King Kong RC's C. CA30 cab. It's a, a Chinese truck cab, uh, sort of the post-World War II era, sort of 40s, 50s, late 40s, early 50s uh, era. 
the truck bed is the bed again from King Kong RC. The bed is the CA10 truck bed, so it's a bed for the different version of the same truck that the cab uh, originates from. A lot of pine detail, a lot of metal detail. These sides fold down, the tailgate folds down. It has two lights in the back, two little red lights, and I've added all my accessories, bits and bobs. I've got some rails in here. I have my controller for my front winch. All my accessories, which are taped into place with mounting tape and a little fire extinguisher that's screwed on uh, in place. There's not much else to say, really. This is a, a great little project. I've had a lot of fun with it. Uh, for one of my first serious builds where I had to scratch a lot of things or figure a lot of things out for myself, it's been a lot of fun. The one thing I have had to do from the plastic kit for the cab was take the floor out completely and refabricate the floor so that I could actually mount, uh, mount the cab properly onto the chassis using one screw which is back here on either side and then using another bolt that's in front of it to help with part of the links. There's another bolt here which I've drilled through the, the plastic card that I used here and use that as like the locking point so the cab slides down, locks onto the two bolts that are sticking out and then gets screwed into place. So it sits quite stable. And for something that isn't going to be doing a lot of heavy crawling or anything like that, I think it works just fine. But apart from that, I think everything is fine. It's a great running uh, little truck, so I'm going to get it out and get a little bit of footage of it running around. <laughs>